In this part, we're going to see how to join a chat and make multiple users communicate together on the same chat channel. So I'm going to send some message on one side and you will see that another user with a different name will reply on the other side. So we have two different instances of Godot running the demo at the moment. We're not going to see how to design that chat box here. Instead, we're going to focus on the server side code. Once again, this is following our series on getting started with Godot and Nakama. You'll find a link to the previous parts in the description below. And with that, let's get started. In the previous part, we worked on the server storage. And so we were outputting information to the debug panel. I'm now going to hide it because we are going to work with the chat box. So in the file system tab, head to the source UI directory and you'll find a chatbox.tscn file. Drag and drop it under the canvas layer. You'll see it appear in the middle of the screen. I'm not going to detail how it works here. Just know that it mostly has a function called add reply. And this one is going to add one of these lines here with the player's name or the username and some placeholder text in that case. Now, the chat box also has some signal. If we go to the notes tab, the text send signal is going to tell you when the player, the user, press the enter key while focusing on this bar there. So if I type some text and press enter, it disappears and it presses the send button. It's going to emit that text send signal, which we're going to use to send the text to the server, wait for the server's response. And when the server tells us it received the message, we're going to add it to the chat box. Before we move on to the server code, I want us to do one thing. We're going to go to the demo and create a new unready variable. Let's call it chatbox to store our chatbox. This is just to not forget later on. Then we can start working on the server side code. So open server connection and we're going to need a few things. We're going to first create a function to join the chat after join world async that we wrote in a previous part. I'm going to expand the script editor and write join chat async. This one is going to return an integer, an error code. And so we're going to use the socket API to join the chat. So socket dot join chat async. We have to pass a chat channel that we want to join. You can name it however you want. Let's call this one world. You can imagine that you could have one chat channel per match, for example, but you can also have multiple channels like in an MMORPG where you have the world, the current region you are in, the market channel, those kinds of things that you can join or communicate through however you'd like. Then we have to pass a channel type. So this is defined on the Nakama socket object. You have a channel type in num and we want to create a room. Note that you also have direct message or group if your player is part of a team or trying to message another player directly. The last two arguments are persistence, a boolean, so whether you want to store the messages or not. And the last argument is if you want the user to be hidden on the chat, it's also a boolean. So we're going to have false for the two of them. Then as usual, this is an asynchronous function, so we have to wait for it to complete. I'm going to wrap it into parentheses and add the yield keyword before. Don't forget to wait for it to be completed here. And then we're going to store that in a variable, the result from that call, the return value. Let's call it chat join result. The type that Nakama returns is from Nakama RT API, real time API. It's a channel object. And so we're going to uh, yield on that value here. I'm also going to wrap the line. Now we can check if that join worked or not. So if chat join result is not an exception, we're going to store our channel ID. So for that, we need a new variable at the top. After presences or world ID, we're going to create a channel ID. It's going to be an empty string to start with. And going back down to our chat result, we're going to set the channel ID to chat join result dot ID. Now we're going to return OK in that case. And if the chat join is an exception, if it didn't work, return error, uh, we can say connection error, for example. And that's it. That allows you to 
join the chat. Then we need a function to send a text message. So let's write one, we'll call it send text async, and we're going to just pass some text that we want to send to the chat. We'll also return an error code if it didn't work. So again, we can do error and exception handling throughout our application. The first thing is you need to use the socket API. So you could say if you don't have a socket, this is some safety statement at the start, you're going to return error unavailable. And we want to make sure that we also have a channel ID. So the, the thing is, you need to call join chat async before you can send text to the chat, right? So we can say if the channel ID is an empty string, then we're going to print some error as well. There's a function print error for that, that's going to give you some debugging information along with the print statement. And we can say can't send a text message to the chat channel ID is an empty string is missing, let's say. And in that case, we can return error invalid data, for example, then we can finally do the calls to actually write the chat message. So I'm going to yield instantly. And we're going to call on the socket API, write chat message async to that function, we have to pass our channel ID, the channel we write to, then you have to pass a dictionary that's going to serve as the payload. So the dictionary should have a message key and the message should contain the text. And finally, we want to wait for that call to complete. Now, of course, we're going to store the result from that request. So the result is going to be of type Nakama RT API. So again, it's on the real time API. It's called the channel message ACK. ACK here stands for acknowledgement. It's the server telling you that it got the message correctly. And then we can again do some conditional returns. So we can use the ternary operator here, we can say return the connection error, if the result is an exception, if result dot is exception, otherwise we return okay. Okay, so now we can connect to the chat and send a text message. Well, I'm missing one part, it's the ability to receive messages from other players sent by the server. Now to do so, we have to go back to the connect to server async function. When we connect to the server, we connected to some signal on the socket object. It turns out there is another signal we can use to receive messages. So socket dot connect, the signal is called receive channel message with underscores. And we're going to connect on this object and create a new function, we'll call it on Nakama socket followed by the name of the signal receive channel message. We're going to create a new signal at the top of the script to emit some information when we received a chat message, So signal chat message received, and that will be the one that our demo dot script will connect to, we're going to pass the username followed by the text of the chat message. And you could use that to basically when you receive a chat message, you might have extra information that you want to filter and emit a neat signal that's just going to have the data you need to display on the screen for the player. And so we can move to the bottom of the file after on Nakama socket closed, and we need to write our function. So let's create a new function on Nakama socket receive channel message, you're going to get a message of type Nakama API dot API channel message. And it's not going to return anything because it's going to emit our signal, we can get some code on the message. So we're going to check for the kind of code we get, and it should be zero. In our case, if it's not, we're going to return from the function, it's that we're not getting a proper channel message in there. The messages are similar to the ones you would see in the Lua API on the server side code. So you get some JSON data that we are going to unpack. So we're going to create a new variable called content it's going to be a dictionary because we're going to pass some JSON from our message. Now we're going to get some JSON data from the server. So we have to turn it into some Gscript data, some dictionary, we're going to use JSON .pass from that and that data lies in the message dot content property, then that dictionary is going to have a result key, it's a bit like what we got with the characters in the previous part. So we have to get that result. And from there, we can emit our signal chat message received, we're going to send the username. So message dot username, 
and the content, so it's in content.message, the text string, the chat message. And with that, we are done for the server connection part. Next, we are going to move on to the demo.gd script to make some calls and to display the messages in the chat box. The demo part is a bit easier than the server connection. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to join the chat, then we're going to listen to the user pressing enter when using the chat box, so the text send signal, and we'll connect to the signal on server connection.gd. Allow me to go back to the top. Chat message received, because we have to send a message to the server and get a response from the server that the message got stalled. And from there, we will draw the text in the chat box. There's a bit of looping here, as you can see, but that's how it works in an online game. You need to have a lot of stuff go through the server. Anyway, I'm going to create a new variable at the top just to store the user's color. And by default, I'm going to use a constant from the color class, color.lime. Now in the ready function of demo.gd, we have to join the chat. So we're going to yield on server connection dot join chat async, wait for the call to complete, and voila, you've joined the chat there. What we have to do next is do some signal connections. So back to the scene, we're going to click on chat box, head to the note tab and double click on text sent. Note that for testing purposes, you don't have to have that signal. You can call server connection dot send text async directly and bypass that part. That's if you didn't use the demo. Anyway, I'm going to double click on text sent and connect that to my demo.gd script. At the bottom of the file here, I'm going to yield and call server connection dot send text async and I'm going to send my text there and wait for this to complete. Now we need to connect the signal we created on server connection, chat message received, so click on server connection and in the note tab, double click on chat message received to connect it to demo.gt. And here we are going to add a reply to the chat box. You could use a print statement instead. I'm going to do chat box dot add reply and uh, we're going to pass the text. Then we need to pass the username and finally user color. The chat box add reply function, if you control click on it, you will see it takes some chat text, the sender's name and some color. And with that, I have the server running. So I can say something like, hi, it will display my email address, the one I used to connect here and the message. This has gone through the server, which you can see from the bottom of the screen, sending a request, etc., with the message hi. So you can see in the debug part at the bottom of the screen that this is working as expected. We can also go to my console, open another instance of Godot in which I'm going to change my username. So in request authentication, I'm going to call myself test2 at test.com. I'm placing the two windows next to one another. And in one, I'm going to say hello. So you can see that these are two clients communicating with the server. They have the same color, but you can see the email addresses are different. And in the second chat box, I only get the new messages that come from other users. Of course, you could get all the chat history by making the chat log persistent and sending it to every new user who joins the chat channel. But that's it for the basics. With that, in the next video, we're going to see how to round out our project by adding pop-up notification when a user joins the game world. See you there.